We're developing a booth which we think could alleviate healthcare or especially sort of interaction with your uh, GP and uh, you would go there and get your vital signs checked regularly as a preventative measure and to avoid yeah, stress on general health and doctors who are who we don't have enough of. I mean, even now our food consumption and production is not sustainable and it won't be even if we remain at this level. But then thinking ahead and thinking of future increased uh, overpopulation, most likely, uh, the issue is just going to become so complex as well as grand that we kind of have to address it. It's going to be inevitable. The idea we've been working on is basically implementing a chip into your body that gives you an incentive or like a good feeling every time you achieve one part of your goal. As we see people being more immersed in social media, it's becoming more and more difficult to find a perfect partner because the picture that is, always, that is portrayed on social media is not always the correct one. So with our technology, we are hoping to use our, our innate feelings that are in our bodies, our hormonal levels, to see if we're actually indeed attracted to, to that person and their feelings are mutual. Our idea is that in the future, an AI decides how much healthcare coverage you get. And depend, this, this depends on your genetic makeup, it de depends on your um, personality makeup, this, would, this AI would calculate how much healthcare you have. So if you're predisposed to cancer, you would get very little healthcare coverage and so on. So it's a bit provocative. Can we find a global one-size-fits-all solution or is it going to be too problematic because of the different variances in accessibility to food as well as technological advancements? So we kind of looked at over-encompassing uh, solutions that might fit all, but, but from that obviously a lot of political uh, resistance will probably grow. So. So I think that's really where, where the humanities bring in the most value, like asking the why questions and, and not focusing on technology for technology's sake or just creating something because it's possible, but rather asking, do we want a world of this kind? Do we want a world without pain? Do we want a world where attraction is obvious? Do we want all, everything transparent just because technology can make it transparent? Okay, so before talking about what she is, I want to take you back uh, in time to 2008. This is in Tokyo, in Japan. I was living there. I was uh, studying Japanese, uh, a little bit of business, and mostly just hanging around. And this, is, this was before the smartphone revolution. Uh, the iPhone came out in 2007 in the US, but it really became big in, like here in Sweden and, and in, in Asia a few, few years later. Uh, so back in 2000, 2008, uh, the Japanese people, they were using uh, very advanced feature phones. Um, and these phones were much more advanced than, than our Nokia 30, 3310 or whatever you had. Uh, so they could email with their phones, they could play very sophisticated games, they could, I think they could even watch uh, movies. So you can see people like this all over the place, like, especially in the subway. People were staring at the phones all the time. And I felt like, wow, people's attention is like to this small piece of, of uh, device that you, you know, you only use it for, for uh, back then you only used it for, for call, calling and text messages. So I felt like this is so cool if we can, you know, kind of capture or get a little bit of people's attention here in order to make people, you know, strive for, for uh, uh, bigger goals for themselves and, and especially improve their well-being because I was studying psychology at that time. And I felt like this is the, this is the real way to, to make psychology big, to really reach out to people seems like Shim is really creating strong experiences for, for the users. So, when you talk to Shim and you, you do positive reflections about some of your close, close, uh, close ones, Shim is uh, kind of nudging you to, to express this also to, to, to these people. 
So I think this is fantastic, like one user saying that she improved her relationship to her cousin just because of, of expressing these kind of positive thoughts to her cousin. And uh, yeah, this is a quote for, from uh, one of the participants in the, in the study who were doing a qualitative um, data measurement as well, uh, saying there is no app that has made it so easy to reflect on things in life as Jim, you can get something out of your time in a better way than just checking Facebook or some, some web page by reflecting upon important things. And this takes us back a little bit to to uh, yeah to where I started, standing there in the subway uh, in Tokyo, looking at these people, uh, watching cat movies or whatever they did. Uh, but you know, taking that time for you know some for your well-being, not just distracting your time. I think that is super important, and you know that's really what drives me a lot. And right now what we're doing with Jim is very much focusing on, you know, like the positive things in life. But if Jim can be this kind of uh, digital friend for a user, then we also believe that, okay, in the future we should be able to predict when you're uh, starting to, to um, feel worse, or not feeling well, so to say, and actually hopefully prevent that, uh, that to come. So kind of, you know, <coughs> internally we were kind of having this, this analogy of, of um, Tesla's, uh, Tesla's self-driving cars trying to predict when a, an accident is coming up. Like, can we, uh, can we be that in the future? Like, trying to predict when someone is, is not feeling well and actually help that person to, to you know, um, yeah, kind of make that turn and, and come back to, to a normal state by, uh, by you know, suggesting activities or, you know, helping that person to reach out to, to a friend or, or family. Uh, but yeah, essentially, like, coming back to this idea uh, in 2008, it's like 10 years ago, it's crazy. Um, but how can we create technology and apps for really making people achieve higher goals than just distracting us. The future of life is exciting. I think we are going to see more and more uh, bridges being made between what is technologically possible and what is biologically needed. Uh, so I think the future of life is going to be more and more about usable technology, useful technology, uh, and also about uh, making technology work for us rather than making it work against us, more or less. The future looks bright. I, I think that we are going to have um, solutions to many of our problems using technology and we are going to have life so much easier because the answers would be like maybe just one, one click of a button away so it will be much, life will be much easier. And I think the future will be driven by technology and I think the technology will decide our ethical discussions. The new generations will be far different from us. Um, just as you can see now, like a one-year-old knows how to control an iPad. Uh, so I think the same will be with the views on bio biology and uh, the uh, political situation that will be. They will ha tackle it differently than we have. I think they won't see as many obstacles because the new ger generation is more free-thinking mm -hmm. and uh, they are more of, they are doers instead of just thinking and dis discussing. That's what I got from this. I'm quite optimistic about the future of life. I hope we will uh, we will manage to be around for quite a long time. <laughs>